How's everybody doing? Sorry for the awkward camera angle. A little bit of a different type of sound on there, but today we're just literally doing a little conversation. You guys can see me, okay? Um, all I'm doing is just kind of, it's been a people been asking me to do some just calm, relaxing weekend videos. Um, I've been trying to de-sleeve and merge some of these large collections lately. Um, so for those of you who are actually watching the video instead of listening, uh, what you're looking at right here is I have random collector's edition cards, random portal era, random uh, signature cards, uh, alternate 4th edition, we got foils, vintage foils, promos, 4th edition cards of value, uh, chronicle cards of value, alpha, beta, unlimited related cards, non-power 9, uh, only dual lands, so we got two piles, revised cards, and then we've got only dual lands, revised dual lands only that came in, and then we have reserve list and high-end cards from the late 90s, the Urza's weather light tempest era over here uh, then we have cards that need to be ebayed and sold immediately over here um, then we have cards i'm de-sleeving now we got arabian knights antiquities legends italian legends more arabian knights like a complete set the dark we got some ice age random things and some unlimited bulk over here um, and that's really about it um, some other collector's edition cards from you've seen from other videos and things <clears throat> So I want to yip yap. I, I got to do this. I got to finish doing this before I can use my filming area for more space again. So I wanted to go ahead and talk to everybody and just say, hey, how's everyone doing? And um, I know a lot of things going on in the world out there, but today I want to have a conversation revolving around um, the collectible and the term investing in collectibles as a whole and how I really believe this is kind of a direction. I think the last couple years especially the last 12 months, has been a huge, um, how do I say it, a turning point or direction for how people perceive saving and putting money aside for the long term. Um, obviously, the collectible world has had a lot of bad images and bad things that happened over the years, mostly because of, you know, the boom and bust of Beanie Babies, Pogs, you know, what's a good thing, the, the sports card era of the 90s. You got a lot of the um, the comic books of the 90s, early 2000s. You have a lot of things that really kind of collapsed in value, per se. So a lot of people who've been through that or were aware of those collapses still have a very negative, uh, how do I say it, a very, a very bitter, negative Nancy Debbie Downer attitude towards long-term on collectibles. It gets a very bad image. But really, the collectible world has been around for a really long time. And the most successful collectibles, obviously, are always the things that fit within those categories that people don't expect to become investments until they mature. And usually it takes, oh God, usually it takes like 20 to 50 years for a collectible class to really mature. We saw that from comic books of, what, 70s era to today? That's, what, 50 years you know, we're seeing the Magic cards from the 90s approaching 30 years from the original Magic cards. So it usually takes a really long time for the, for the sector to prove itself. And along that way, you know, you get a lot of people that get burned, a lot of negative, a lot of people that tell you, no, 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 bad idea, this and that. And, and that's just how it is. It's always going to be that way. But we're in an era now in 2020 where we're seeing this attitude towards Magic and Pokemon in particular for the cardboard space but also the video game space. The video game space has been really interesting. Ever since we had this transition to digital games and microtransactions, free to play, free to pay, you know, and we're seeing all this new era of like, you know, these type of video game production, the way they produce the games and the way the, the markets and the sectors work, the way the companies make their money, and it's really changed the attitude towards that area. And I think the video game world, specifically when it comes to the Nintendos, the, the Playstations, the handheld, the vintage Segas, and the Ataris, and all these different specialty supplemental systems and add-ons, and the Nintendo, the Game Boys, the Game Boy Colors, the DSs, the 3DSs, the, you know, then the Sega era with the Game Gear and the handheld and what was it, the PlayStation Vita, Vista? Uh, I mean, there's a really interesting niche market that's really carving out in a lot of these sectors that really, I, I think you really can't underestimate it. A lot of people say, oh, we're really long-term cartridges or the batteries or corrosion or, you know, it just doesn't work. I mean, I, I, people tell me the same thing. They say, Rudy, 
Don't keep cardboard a long time. Remember, after so many hundreds of years, cardboard literally disintegrates. So you get a lot of, I, was like, I get that, but I'm not really concerned about a thousand years from now, but thank you for your concern. But overall, yeah, I mean, a lot of these things have truth and validity to them, but the markets are going to do what the markets are going to do, no matter what we talk about. So let me give everyone a good example here. Uh, hopefully, otherwise this is, just, this is going to sound really silly. Hopefully, by the time you guys are watching this video, I'm hoping, uh, how long are we in this video already? Five minutes? Okay. I'm hoping, for those of you watching this video, uh, I hope I already put that video live about the VIP Masters. I'm not sure if it went live or not, but in case it didn't go live, and this is just awkward, I have a video coming where I, I'm going to say, sorry everyone, I don't think the VIP Masters at like $100 a pack is really that crazy. Even though it, on the surface, it's stupid. And no, I don't agree with it, but this is what's happening. I'm not here to tell you guys what Wizards is going to do. Wizards is going to do what Wizards is going to do. There's nothing we can do about it. And of course, people get angry when I talk about that. And I fully expect that video to just become a dumpster fire. But it needs to be said. And no one in the world wants to make a YouTube video talking about this stuff. And of course, in three to five years from now, when those VIP Master Packs are even $200 a pack, you know, it's going to make a great follow-up video. Why? Not because I agree with the decision Wizards is doing, but because I see what's happening. And we need to acknowledge what's actually happening in the world. We can't just be angry, raw, re, you know, all the internet memes and gifs and all that. We need, while we all feel a certain way, is not really the point of the conversation. The most important part is to have the conversation and acknowledge what is happening and what is not happening. And yes, Wizards is raising prices. And this VIP Masters thing is like the introduction groundwork to this next wave of price increases. And it is what it is, everybody. It's not about to get better. And as they keep testing and pushing the envelope, it's going to keep going higher and fancier and flashier. And a lot of people say, well, that's how the sports card bubble bursts. Well, technically, yes, but technically, no. From my understanding, and I'm not a professional in this, so uh, definitely seek a sports card guy. I am not the guy to talk about in that. But I can tell you all for a fact that the sports card world, the number one variable that led to it was overprinting and 20 different companies printing the same baseball cards and having just a bazillion print run of the same person in year. Every form of variant, there would be a new baseball card set would come out. There would be 30 different versions. And again, so that's from what I gather. And then, of course, they overprinted it all and it just has no value. So, and again, I don't know enough about it, but I do know that was one of the leading variables to it. Magic is not like that. Magic is printed by one company. Not 20 different companies are printing Magic cards. It's one company. It's WotC, Wizards of Dr. Coast. Love them or hate them, you know, you can say Wizards is the worst company in the world that's making the best game in the world. Wizards makes the best game in the world, run by the worst. You can say whatever you want, but this is where we are. And based on where we are, this is what we need to talk about. So it's important to have a conversation that discusses what's actually happening. Not how I feel about it. Not how you all feel about it. Feel free to thumbs down and get angry or whatever. But it's important to talk about the actual events taking place. And to, and to separate our opinion from it. Because we'll be better investors and we'll be better collectors of magic cards. And understanding of values and numbers. If we just follow what's the actual movement of the market. Versus being angry about it or happy about it. So because of that, yes, Wizards is continuing to make flashy, fancier, more pricey magic products. And this makes a lot of the people in the magic community, and when I say a lot, be careful, because just because what you read online and however many people are angry doesn't always reflect the 10 million magic people that supposedly exist. But keep in mind, you know, the, the data still does not reflect that people are angry enough to stop buying. That's, that's really the ultimate answer. No matter how anyone feels, how much you like, dislike me, other people, how much you're, the toxicity of the internet, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The results are the data shows the products of everything are selling like crazy across the board. The data also shows most people buying the products today are not keeping them sealed. I don't expect Jumpstart and Double Masters to be any different. I expect Double Masters to have a similar print run to Ultimate Masters. I expect Jumpstart to have restocks that are similar to a Conspiracy Battle Bomb. Same thing. I fully expect that to kind of unfold the same way. <clears throat>
And I fully expect most people are going to be so emotional in the decisions versus logical, they'll end up making bad long-term decisions. And for those of you out there who have the ability to stay focused and strip the emotion, leave it at the door, uh, there's room to make a lot of money. And there's room to enjoy the hobby, collect the cards, and of course build your positions and have a great long-term experience. And I think that's very imperative. So back to the point of if I'm, if, anyway, so I have a video of VIP Masters coming out. Like I said, I apologize if it's not in the order and that video is not coming out until the day after today, but I'm, I'll try to get it out before I, this video goes live. And you'll, you'll probably see a lot of people get angry, a lot of attacks, and you'll see a lot of emotional responses. But the problem is the product's going to sell really well. The data already shows the pre-orders and demand are through the roof. And at the end of the day, you know, I mean... No matter how much we like and dislike it, this is what's happening. And I think this is like the first inning in the ground floor of more future high-end products. I firmly believe we're going to have artist sketch cards, autograph cards, insert cards, numbered cards, parallels. We're, it, it's coming to magic, everybody. I, I assure you, some form of variant of what I just said is coming to Magic the Gathering. Hey, Lightning Bolt. I didn't know there's this is a basic win. You guys watching the video? Alpha Lightning. Absolutely. I know it's not like a million dollar card, but just such a, just symbolic, that's all. Just a very symbolic card. So, anyways, to swing this back around, so in the era of video games, in sports card, I mean, I have these people I've been talking to and some of the distributors, the sports card business is booming. I mean, it is the hottest it's been probably since before the collapse of the 90s, but it's so different. It's so tightly controlled. The supply numbers are so tight, giggity, and it's definitely not going to relapse the same way it did in the 90s sports card collapse, because it's just different. They evolve, they learn, but oh my goodness, the money, the sports trading card world of football, basketball, and baseball cards, the big three there, are just on fire. The money being, it's a, it's a multi-billion dollar thing, and the products, and the values, it is just... It's incredible, ladies and gentlemen. It is absolutely incredible. And because of that, you know, I, I just want to relate that to Magic. I mean, sports cards don't even have the utility that Magic cards have, that you can actually enjoy them. Build custom decks and personal things and absolutely just have a great experience. And Magic is just, it's such a beautifully engineered custom in the way it lures and attaches you to the game. It, it's really I almost want, I almost, honestly, everybody, I almost want to say, like, magic cards are a form of addiction and drug. Because I'm at, just like you guys watching and not listening right now, and you're seeing me go through all these cards, I mean, these things are addicting to me. Like, I don't care about how many I have or what I don't have, or I just truly, I mean, I can't explain it. I am just obsessively in love with these old cards. And it's, it's, it is kind of strange. It's kind of bizarre, and I think about that sometimes on well, myself. And, you know, I see the sports car world booming and doing the same thing. I see, you know, I'm looking over here at the Magic and Pokemon. These things are booming. I mean, everything is just booming. And, yeah, it's a little scary because it's going so well, so quick. It always makes myself and many others nervous. But, you know, I think we're in an era of change. You're seeing a cultural movement. You're seeing a lot of political things. You're seeing culture being pulled in different directions. And you see a lot of people with a stock market and conventional investments. And you're seeing a lot of movement towards alternative investing. All right, hang on, everybody. I'm going to go put these sleeves in a different area. I'll keep talking, but it sounds like I'm going to be in the distance. I'm still here, everybody. Hang on. I'm coming back. I'm still here. Anyways, all right, here I come. Anyways, but I think, I, I really believe, everybody, that the video game thing... Is, is like this new infancy of another category of collectibles. I've been paying attention to the video games for a while. And not only the video games, but I also believe um, that the, well, comic books and all the other things have already really kind of gone up quite a bit. There's really not a lot to argue or discuss on there. But I, I really think the video game space, and I, I'm still not a fan of graded video games, everybody. I just don't. It just does nothing for me. Graded video games, just, I don't like them graded. I'm sorry. It just feels, doesn't, it doesn't hit me. It just doesn't quite feel perfect to me for the, God, those are nice. 
you know, the graded video game thing, I'm just not a fan of. I just like factory sealed video games and also like complete in box video games where you can open and enjoy the game. I'm a huge fan of that. Graded video games, not as much. I do own a couple just like Zelda and things just because I had good, good deals and opportunities to get them. But overall, I do think the video game space over the next 10, 20 years, the original 80s, 90s, and 2000s between the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, the PlayStation 1 and 2 range, all the handhelds, a lot of these older categories are going to become very sought after niche markets. These niche markets, I'm telling you all, uh, I think they're in their infant stages. And the, the fact that a lot of these older things have really fancy like collector's editions and variants. And when I say collector's editions, I'm not talking like collector's editions like you see today. I'm talking like, have you guys seen some of the old, I almost want to make a video just showing old PlayStation games and old and some of the old collector's editions with like these leather books and like these exotic packaging. It, it's incredible. Completely different compared to like today's standards. I hate these. God, I, I do not like these perfect fit sleeves. I feel like I'm going to damage the car trying to get some of these things out of these perfect fits. Can't, it drives me crazy, everybody. Anyway, so that, that's, my, that's my vibe on that. I just think that moving forward, I think the video game market is going to be something where if you're trying to have stocks, bonds, or real estate, and you, are, you need exposure to collectibles, whether it's an inflation hedge or you just want something different, I think the video game, comic book, and trading card thing are going to be the big three. And of course, you have you know coin collecting, stamp collecting. But for me, I see the collectibles as really being cards, video games, and comic books. And again, I know there's then there's action figures. There's all these you know there's Legos. I mean, there's a huge Lego collector investor market. There's a lot of other subcategories that are out there. But overall, I'm just pointing out that it really feels like to me that the magic in Pokemon. I don't know how much of it's really in a bubble. It's just the rate of growth and return is just really high, making people nervous. But the demand for these things are crazy. As long as that demand continues, I just don't know how much is really going to retrace. It will stop going up. Remember that, just like Pokemon and Matt, I mean, the reserve list thing of 2017, 2018. The prices will level out. They'll calm down. But at the same time, it doesn't mean you're going to see everything just collapse down to nothing and everyone's, I mean that's not going to, they'll just cool off and go back to normal rates of return, which I always consider to be 5 to 8% a year. I've told everybody that a million times. So, I, I just wanted to point that out with everybody and what's going on here. I wanted to mention about Magic and these flashy new cards. And I think what bothers me to say this the most is that I don't like the direction of all these fancy flashy things. I really don't. But at the end of the day, um, I, I, at the end of the day, I know they're going to go up in value, and I know five years from now, double masters and VIP masters will be higher than whatever price it is today as of the filming of this video. And, and that's the problem. Today's day, by the way, is July 10th. I don't know if you, if you guys are going to see this pretty soon. I filmed the VIP masters uh, pricing video on the 9th, so hopefully that's, you know, about lining up with about the same time. But, you know, I just, that I think that's the part that bothers me more than any of this, is that I know the direction of Magic is going to this flashier version I don't like. And I also know that it's going to be successful. And, and the prices of the flashy cards are going to do well. I think the flashy, the sealed products are going to do well. In five years from now, people are going to be looking for Throne and, and Theros and Aquaria and Zendikar collector's boxes. And I think they're going to be sought after and people are going to want to buy them. And the prices are going to be so cheap today compared to what people are going to have to pay in the future to get those products. And I think that's the part that really, it sucks. Because I just, I miss the days of, you know, cons of Tarkir for 80 bucks. And you could get three fetch lands in a box, of, on average, in every box of cons. You know? And I just, and now we're never, ever going to see an $80 standard box with fetch lands. And that's the part that grinds my gears. Because Wizards is full-on leveraging and understanding the value of the secondary market. And unfortunately, I mean, I do feel like I have some blame in it. Because I feel like this channel, which is now averaging about 3.5 million views a month, I feel like this channel definitely helped push Wizards in a direction of recognizing the value of the secondary market of their product. And I think that alone has helped Wizards say, hey, 
we need to really focus on leveraging, you know, our, our equity in these old cards, we're not old cards as a reserve list, but in the value of the cards so that we can sell more expensive premium products. Honestly, like that's exactly how I feel about it. And I think my channel really accelerated that. I think there's no way to really, I don't know how to say it. There, there's no way to really downplay that. I, Cause I just didn't think this YouTube channel was going to turn into this massive thing. I didn't, I knew there were people in the world that were big into investing in magic cards and this and that, but I never in a million years fully understood how many people were really looking at the hobby and doing this and obsessed and doing this stuff similar to the level that I am or that are, that I'm interested in. I just didn't think the pool of audience and people in the world was really that into this. I, I really didn't. I, I genuinely, to this day, it surprises me because in my real life, you know, non-internet world, when I go around town or run to the grocery store, if somebody, you know, I don't, I look around and most people, I can walk up to a random person and they're not going to even know what Magic the Gathering is. Honestly, the average person in America doesn't even know what these magic cards are. Isn't that crazy sounding? Isn't it absolutely nuts to say that right now? And then when I turn around, then I ratchet even higher and I double down and say, okay, you do know what magic is. Did you, how do you feel about people investing in magic cards? And people's face, the look on their face is just unreal. People look at you like, this guy is the dumbest Timmy I've ever met. The amount of people who thought collecting and looking at magic cards as long-term investments and making fun of me the amount of people who've said that to me over a 20-year period, I can't even count. I, I, it's it's got to be in the thousands. From co-workers to ex-girlfriends to family members. Now, obviously, in the last five years, nobody says anything to me anymore. But for the first 15 years, it was constant, like, eye roll. Oh, God. Good luck, Rudy. Thanks for sharing. I wish you the best. At least he's having a good time. He's not hurting anybody. He enjoys it. I mean, serious. That is, that is literally the genuine... Genuine response of most people. And, you know, and I feel that <laughs> collecting video games and, you know, vintage actual non-digital games and non-digital items, I, you know, in the Pokemon thing. I mean, just, you know, people, I remember when I bought those Pokemon expensive original Watsy boxes a couple years ago for like $500 and $1,000 for a box. And I remember people saying, you spent $1,000 for a box of Pokemon? And now they're like ten grand a box, and now everyone in my family is like, "Rudy, sell the Pokemon! It's it's skyrocketed. Rudy, sell it all, lock in the profit." And I'm like, "Okay, so if they go to fifty or a hundred thousand, just like an alpha card does, you know how stupid I'm gonna feel because I, I hurry up to lock in the money." I mean, well, do you need the money? Well, no, I don't. None of this stuff for me anymore is really about money. I just enjoy it. I'm past all that. I truly just enjoy the cards and, and the, the whole, the challenge and the navigation. It, it's a whole world for me. This stuff is my entire life at this point. And I don't think a lot of people recognize that. So before we just wrap up this video here, because now I'm just all over the place rambling. When, when you guys, just a friendly reminder for everybody out there, when you watch this channel, you have to always remember, just seeing a few minute videos and like 10, 20 minute videos, you got to remember, it's like how, I mean, the, the messages I get all the time about how did you get this many cards? Or how did you get to this level? Or how can I get there? And I told everybody over and over, I would love for somebody to come out with an Alpha Investments 2.0. Well, I mean, Beta Invest. I don't know. Come up with your own name. I would love for somebody to copy me and do what I did because I'm not going to be doing this forever. And I feel like, and people tell me, well, Rudy, the day you stop making videos, what, like, there's going to be like a huge hole in like, the, the community of internet of people who, I don't know, are into this stuff. There's just not a lot of it out there, and that's true. But I just, I tell them the same thing. I'm a regular person from Florida. Nothing special. All I did was go against the grain and go all in on cardboard for my entire life. Now, everybody, anybody listening to this video or watching the video because you just want to look at cool cards, whatever it may be, anyone in this video listening or watching you cannot disagree with me that if you do anything for 20 years in a row, you're not going to be good at it. You're going to be considered a master at it or someone, a, 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 a professional at it. If you do anything in your life for 20 years, I don't care if you're skateboarding, you're, I don't know, rollerblading, is that still a thing? I don't know, whatever it is. 
And whatever you're into, if you do it your entire life every single day, after 20, 30 years, you're going to be a flipping expert at it. I mean, there's no way around it. The experience and knowledge you will accumulate is second to none beyond insane. And I don't think people really grasp that. You can't just, like when I, I get these messages, I skim through these emails of these bazillions of messages that, I apologize, I don't have time to reply to all the public emails. It's just, it's insane. And I see these people, hey Rudy, I'm in high school, you know, how can I get to a level where you're at with cards or, you know, I bought my first pack of magic and, and I was like, look, it, it, this is not, it's not a race. It's an endurance run. This is a mindset. This is stuff that takes tremendous behind the scenes work, effort, working two in the morning, nine in the morning, falling asleep on a warehouse floor with boxes around you, waking up and starting again. This is a state of mind. It takes tremendous discipline and long-term commitment to do and get to the level it takes if you want to be like the next alpha investments. Anyone can do it. And I encourage anyone out there to do it, but to just say, oh, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to start flipping cards. See, now you're just being, you're being, you know, her, the hyperbole and just the exaggeration. Now you're just being a Timmy. You know, I worked, you know, real jobs, brokerage firms, military restaurant contract, business. I did all this other stuff on the side. Well, I guess that was my real job and this was on the side. But eventually this took over and I dropped the other stuff. And that's how life works. It, you have to transition responsibly slowly and be patient there's no shortcut there you cannot just shortcut this crap into becoming some abc super big shot it takes a long time and you have to be willing to go the distance there are no shortcuts if you're looking for a quick shortcut you're going to be really disappointed because it's just not there and i just don't think people want to either acknowledge or accept that because it really is just such a long, slow process that you just mentally, it's, it's a turnoff. You don't want to tell yourself that. Nobody mentally wants to say, Rudy, I'm going to, I want to do what you're doing. Oh my God, it's going to take me 20 years. Uh, that doesn't, I, I want it now. I want to do it now. I want to, I want to be successful now. I want to have cool old magic cards now. Okay. Well, you're in for a heap of disappointment because your perspective is skewed. You know, it's, it's the same thing with everything. It's like investing. Everybody thinks you're just going to make all this money in magic cards, and it's just not true. All the stuff we talk about when I report price changes and price increases and different things, remember, these are results of me holding products or talking about things for years and people making fun of saying it's garbage, don't listen to Rudy, this and that. Then, then if you don't believe it, what I'm saying, then no, don't listen. Choose your own path on it. But at the same time, remain open-minded about how unpredictable the future in the world is. That's You, you have to have a, a nice balancing act. Because I don't have all the answers. I've predicted things wrong. I mean, there's no way. I mean, golly, if I had everything right, I would... I have nothing in Aether Revolt. Do you know how irritating that is? I used to sell... I sold probably 1,000, 2,000 of those boxes to patrons for 79 shift. I don't have a single Aether Revolt booster box right now. That is, like, call it that, just, oh, God, that stuff just grinds my gears. I screwed that stuff up so badly. You know, I mean, but that's, that's life. That is how it works. And you need to make sure you have the ability to not lose focus. Because even when I get angry and lose focus, I made those terrible decisions to not stay the course, to not have exposure to certain products, blah, 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 too expensive, overpriced, and I regret it every single time. And I encourage everybody else to always be cautious and think about that stuff before you make rash decisions on anything. It's very, very important. And it'll help you prevent those regrets. Nobody wants regrets in life, but we all get them. So to sum up this video before we call it quits today, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to me talk and ramble. Um, on the backs coming up here, we got obviously the jump starts, the big thing now followed by the double masters and the VIP masters, all of which I expect a lot of market turbulence and anger, excitement across the board. But again, I want to remind everybody, you know, in a long enough time frame, all sealed product moves up in price. And in a long enough time frame, if you stay focused, you actually work hard, you actually really push and truly give it 100%. Nobody out there wants to really say, everyone, oh, I, I, I try as hard as I can. BS, man, BS. What are you working a couple days a week, part-time? You working full-time? 
there's seven days in a week. You need eight hours of sleep per day. Maybe a couple hours in between for breaks, sleep, rest, family things. That means you, can, you should be working seven days a week, eight hours a day. That's a minimum of 50, 60 hour work weeks. If you want to truly contact me and tell me, Rudy, I give it my 100%. Because I promise you, 99% of people in this world don't give it their 100%. You, I mean, it's just how human psyche works. Because why? Because giving it 100% sucks. It's boring. It, it's depressing. It wears you down. It makes you feel burned out. And it makes you want to quit. But for the 1% out there who actually truly wants to have bigger and greater things, it's out there. It's just a matter of if you're willing to go it without shortcuts. Thanks for listening, everyone. Be safe. Have a fantastic day.